Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown, back in my cider shed with some more cider to try, and it is a cider today, and it's one from a producer I've managed to avoid for one reason or another. Never had anything from them. Don't know why in particular. Seen it around loads. Never had any. What is it, Chris, that you've been avoiding? Excellent question. It is Thistley Cross. So a Scottish cider maker based in East Lothian, I believe. I think the guy who set it up is an artist. It was an artist called Paul Stewart or something like that. Paul Stewart? I think it's Paul Stewart. Something like that. If it's wrong, I'll put it on the screen here. But I think it's Paul Stewart. Started in uh, 2008-ish, I think, 2009. Uh, yeah. Uh, what does it say on the bottle? It says, so this is whiskey cask conditioned uh, in Glen Murray whiskey cask. So Glen Murray is Speyside. Uh, actually, my favourite uh, region for whiskey because it's quite a toffee sort of toffied character which I like very much I'm into like the island stuff the really smoke stuff don't like that much at all but I do like a nice toffee character sort of spare side whiskey so maybe I like this maybe there will, there will be toffee character in this and I love toffee deliciously thistly in 2008 an artist and a farmer joined forces in Dunbar to become Scotland's first cider maker Real fruit, hand methods, hand methods, hand methods, plenty of maturation time and a few happy accidents create the unmistakably delicious flavour of Thistley Cross Cider. And I think they did sort of crowd, crowdsource, locally sort of crowdsource the fruit as well to make the base cider. I believe, I might be wrong. Matured for six months in Glen Murray whiskey casks. Tasting notes, dry, smooth cider with warming notes of vanilla, oak and honey. That would be the oak. That would be the oak. Right then, let's crack this mother where's me there it is found it let's open it up and have a go uh, 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 uh. let's pour it out big glass again big glass again we love the big glass so already the colour saying to me this is probably made from culinary rather than cider apples because that is very light in colour before it's carbonated quite a nice head in it but some nice Carbonation from forced carbonation lately. I, I mean, I always keep saying that I think Turner's are the masters of that. It's brilliant texture. But look at that. It's almost got like a Belgian lace thing going on there. And the head is retaining, which is interesting. Uh, it doesn't seem super fizzy, which is good. We don't like too much fizz. We like a little bit, but not too much. That's got a nice, nice pale gold, though I want to say that is. It is a pale gold. Very bright. Filtered, obviously. But me guess, me guessing that this is culinary apples. So we're going to be more of a sort of a a bright fruit forward character um, rather than that sort of tannic character so more, like I would say I think as white as um, uh, dessert culinary apples making something which is more like a white wine with less tannin and so forth more fruit forward whereas the cider apples are more like a red wine more tannic sort of character you know but then there's, there's lots of things in between it's not black and white there's like shades of grey across the spectrum let's have a sniff Really delicate nose, actually. It's very delicate. But yeah, what I'm getting is like a fresh apple that's just been cut in half, is the character I'm getting, rather than a sweated, aged apple. <sighs> Not getting loads of whiskey on the nose. Oh, maybe the merest hint in the background. The merest hint. And I would say it's like a vanilla -y kind of thing. Yeah, it is. There, there is that fresh fruit character, but it's softened and rounded by like a very gentle, very gentle sort of vanilla character. And it's, it's almost a kind of a, what is that? I'm not sure. The more I'm smelling it, the more I'm getting whiskey. But it is, it's, I'm going to have to stick my nose right in the glass and sniff, sniff hard to get it. All right, let's try it. To be honest, I don't like things to be overpowered by barrels. You know, I've said this loads of times. Put them in a barrel. Sometimes you just end up tasting what was in the barrel rather than the thing you put in the barrel. You know, which is not not good you want to taste the cider or the whatever you put in the barrel not the just the barrel itself what's the point now the two things have to connect and meld and complement not smother let's try it okay this is pretty sweet this is pretty sweet it will be back sweetened fact in fact it's back sweetened it absolutely is back sweetened. 6.7%. Yeah, so it would have fermented to dry, to have back sweetened it. In my opinion, overly back sweetened it. And I wonder what the back sweetened it with. Is it sugar? 
Uh, what's in here? It contains sulfites. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Any ingredients? There's an ingredients list. Can't see one except for it contains sulfites. Um, very sweet. Very sweet. And it feels like a, a fake sweetness. Doesn't feel like a real sweetness at all. Not even close. Um, yeah. I've got a sweet tooth. This is a bit cloying. It doesn't have the acidity to balance it. It's got some acidity, but it's nowhere near enough to balance the sugar, in my opinion. It's, it's out of whack. I, mean, I always use um, Guatkins as an example. Actually, this one's quite a good example as well. Guatkins, their um, original blend, but also this one, their No Bull. Um, it's got some sweetness to it, it really has, but acidity, great acidity that balances it. I mean, you can be able to go back and go back and go back. This, a bit more cloying. There is a hint of whiskey, but to be honest, this tastes, to all intents and purposes, like, like, um, almost like Strongbow or something like that. That's what it makes me think of. It's got so much sugar in it, lacks acidity. It's a bit cloying. Um, the whiskey barrel, it, oh, it's kind of been wasted. It's kind of been wasted because it's, it's just, it's too sweet. It's not acid enough. It's out of whack. And actually that sort of toffee vanilla character is always making it feel sweeter. Um, yeah, yeah, not, it, lots of people drink this stuff. And actually this was gifted to me, or gifted to the market stand by a customer who said, oh, I should try this. So I've tried it and I feel really badly because it's not my cup of tea, but it's just my, not my cup of tea. That's it, right? That doesn't mean that you won't like it. And if you like things which are a bit sweeter, if you like strong more, if you like sort of like the commercial ciders, and you like sort of barrel aged stuff, then absolutely give it a go. Absolutely give it a go. But not my cup of tea, I must say. For me, too much sweetness, out of whack. To torn back that sugar, you'd have got more acidity, it'd be more balanced, and actually you probably would have tasted the whiskey barrel more. And if you're gonna put it in a whiskey barrel for six months, you might as well, you know. I mean I've been saying you don't want too much, but in this case, it's almost like yeah. I want to taste a little bit more of it. Um, yeah, so there you go, Disley Cross. I want to get some more of their stuff to try. This is only one one thing they do, and they do lots of different things. So we should not write them off on the back of this. This just isn't my, this doesn't suit my palate. That's it. There you go, guy. Our first Disley Cross. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me, in my my shed once again. I hope you join me again in the future. But until then, cheers. <laughs>